Hi guys, I'm TJ. Welcome back to New Zealand Mysteries. I'm glad that you're here. We are a community uh, at New Zealand Mysteries just wanting to bring awareness to missing persons and unsolved murders, mainly from New Zealand but around the world. I apologise in advance for the audio and video. It's not the greatest. I'm working on a cheap laptop and just using that microphone with free software. One day I'll upgrade, but at the moment it is what it is, and I've got to work with what I've got. Uh, in the description box below, you'll find links to our Facebook page and our website. The website has an extensive uh, list of missing persons. If you'd like to support the channel, it's greatly appreciated. I'm just a one-person woman band here, and um, any support would help. So links for that are below as well. You'll also find links to all the sources that I've used. Uh, remember to hit the like button or dislike button if you prefer. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe and please share these stories. Whether it's sharing this episode or sharing the Facebook page, I believe that a lot of the cases I feature are able to be solved. They just need to be seen or heard by the right person or the right people with the information needed. Now, after all that blah blah stuff let's get into it today's episode we are talking about the disappearance and uh think of homicide the thinking of jessica boyce so we're going to go to reporter.nz but it says the sources from stuff.co.nz the family of missing marlborough woman jessica boyce are worried she may have been taken Boyce's mother, Kay Johnston, said family and friends began to suspect within days of her disappearance that Boyce, 27, might have been kidnapped from a forest park. Boyce was last seen on March 19, 2019, driving her mother's red Holden Ute. Two hikers found the vehicle abandoned near Lake Chalice in Mount Richmond Forest Park, 90 minutes west of Blenheim on March 22, and call the place. Now I'll quickly show you a bit of a map uh, so you know what we're talking about. So if you look to the right over here this is Blenheim itself um, and it is at the top of the South Island of New Zealand. Um, so down here Renwick is where Jess was from and uh, went missing from and down here, this huge thing is the Richmond Hill Forest Park. And in here is the Lake Chalice Car Park. And that is where the ute was found. Inside the ute were Boyce's wallet, spiritual crystals and phone with no SIM card. The car was unlocked and both the front windows were down. Her family found it odd that Boyce's vehicle was parked on the mountain track and her stuff was in the car. Her mum said it was the way they found the ute. The whole thing just looked like she'd been taken. She might have been up there at Lake Chalice, but she never made it out of there by herself. We think she's been taken and we've told the police that. Jess could have been picked up and held somewhere, but without the right material that they need, police can't do much. A police spokeswoman said on Thursday that police were continuing to carry out searches of the area and information continued to be received and investigated. She did not confirm whether police had ruled out kidnapping. Police and Lansar searched the forest park and its huts when the red Holden Ute was found, but suspended their efforts on March the 26th until more information came forward. Johnston, her mum, said she was concerned for her daughter's safety as her mind was like a six-year-old when she went missing. Boyce suffered from depression, anxiety, memory problems due to a car accident two years earlier and was self-medicating, she said. Boyce was referred to the Marlborough Mental Health Service in Blenheim by her doctor on February 12th and 21st weeks before her disappearance, but was turned away both times. A couple of side notes. First one, why do reporters use the surname of the victim all the time? I think that it's better to personalise 
and Jessica was a real person, the victims are real people, they're not genuinely, generally called their surname in real life, so why are they, you know, like that way in, in articles? If you know the answer, comment below. And I hate we're hearing that people who need help and are asking for help get turned away uh, from mental health services. It's absolutely disgusting. I hear it all the time in this country and um, it's just not good enough. So from tvnz.co.nz, there's just a bit of a timeline at the bottom here. Jessica Boyce, 27, was last seen on March the 19th, 2019. Her family reported her missing and said they were concerned for her welfare. When her car was found at Lake Chalice on March the 22nd, a search and rescue team joined the search. Police issued a statement on the case on March the 26th. Eight days after Miss Boyce went missing, search efforts were suspended. In October 2019, police announced they were treating her disappearance as a homicide. From stuff.co.nz, this is October 2019, police search undirect vehicles and search for Jessica Boyce's body. Canvas Town residents are shocked their small settlement is at the centre of a homicide investigation as police search a property for the body of missing Marlborough woman Jessica Boyce. The property in rural Marlborough is littered with close to 100 wrecks of old cars, utes, vans and buses. So quickly going back to that map, this was down here where Blenheim and Renwick were, this is the Richmond Hill Forest Park and up here is Canvas Town. And for those uh, viewers who are not from New Zealand, this is the top of the South Island of New Zealand. A tractor driven by a police officer could be seen lifting and pulling the vehicles away on Thursday with officers checking the ground underneath. Gosh, what a job for them. Police confirmed that officers were looking for a body at the property. The Canvas Town search was expected to finish on Thursday night and no arrests had been made, a police spokeswoman said. Look at all those cars. Gosh, if they went through all those, what a job. It's crazy. That's a nice photo of Jess. Police had also searched a property in the coastal township Faranui, 60 kilometres south of Blenheim. That search had finished and some items of interest had been taken away for further forensic examination. One person was at the Faranui property when police arrived and was spoken to, but nobody was arrested. Detective Senior Sergeant Sloan had a message on Wednesday for, quote, those struggling with what they know about Jessica's disappearance, unquote. Come forward to ease that struggle, Sloan said. Sloan said those responsible were likely acquaintances of Boyce. Boyce's mother, Kay, said in April her daughter had been suffering with depression, anxiety and memory problems due to a car accident two years earlier and was self-medicating with drugs. A team of six Blenheim detectives and one detective sergeant had spent the last seven months sifting through more than 120 tip-offs to eliminate false leads before the case became a homicide investigation this week. More than 40 investigators, dog handlers, scene of crime officers and specialist search crew were taking part in the searches with police from the top of the south and Canterbury involved. On Tuesday, police said they believed the Red Holden Rodeo Ute Boyce was last seen in had been deliberately planted at Lake Chalice at Mount Richmond Forest Park to mislead police. Sloan said investigations of this nature do take time and we're all well aware of the public's expectations, but it's not a TV show and the reality is it does take time. That's a lovely photo. Just before we go on, um, I don't believe in victim shaming or victim blaming at any stage. No way. 
I think that it doesn't matter whether people suffer from addictions, mental health issues, um, about their past. Every victim deserves to be heard and is, you know, I don't want to see any victim blaming in the comments below. Anything like that will be quickly moved off, I can tell you now. Um, I believe that most of you are um, in the same thinking as I am, so I trust in that. Now, moving on to the Otago Daily Times. Just a quick note, if someone can help me. Uh, there's two dates here. Up here, we've got Thursday, 14th of May, 2020. Down here, we've got 7th of November, 2019. Now, when you're trying to put together a cohesive story uh, for people in chronological order so that it makes sense, uh, it's hard to do that when there's two dates. So if anybody knows why that is or which one's the uh, right one, if they could comment below and let me know, that would be awesome. So Marlborough Police have searched two more Blenheim homes and seized several items of interest in the Jessica Boyce homicide investigation. A Warwick Street property in Mayfield was searched yesterday with several items of interest seized by police, Senior Sergeant Sloan said. This morning, another property was searched in Henderson Street, Riversdale, where samples of forensic value were seized. Forensic scientists helped police at both addresses. Occupants of both properties have been spoken to by police, but no arrests were made, Sloan said. The investigation continues to receive information from the public and investigators are steadily working through inquiries that have been generated from the information, he said. And down below is uh, contact information if you have anything to submit. And I'm going to have all that information in the description box below and at the end of the episode. Now moving to marlboroughweekly.co.nz. Family share victim's photo to shame Keller. Good on them. And it's an awesome photo of her as well. The family of missing woman Jessica Boyce want people to share her photo on social media to help shame her killer into coming forward. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Jessica's cousin Aaron has posted a new profile pic of the smiling Renwick woman who disappeared on March 19. He urged people to share the photo in the hope it would prick someone's conscience. In the post, he says how he hopes the post would propel people to come forward. And I reckon if uh, we give it a shot too and share it as much as we can and share her image as much as we can, you just never know because it just seems so close to being uh, solved. Beautiful Jess, keeping her as my profile photo in solidarity with investigators and everyone else trying to get justice for Jess. Hopefully seeing Jess everywhere might break the conscience of whoever is involved and propel them to come forward. And this line simply states why I do this um, work. Anything's worth a shot, eh? If anyone else wants to do this, even just for 48 hours, it would be really cool to see her smiling everywhere, he wrote. Possible forensic evidence relating to the homicide investigation has been seized by police from a Blenheim home. Police working on the disappearance of Renwick woman Jessica Boyce, 27, searched a house on Warwick Street and another on Henderson Street last week. Detective Senior Sergeant Sloan says the occupant of the Warwick Street address was spoken to by police on Thursday, but no arrests have been made. He goes on, a second warrant was executed at a Henderson Street address and samples of potential forensic value were seized. The investigation continues to receive information from the public and investigators are steadily working through inquiries that have been generated from that information, he says. Forensic scientists from crime scene specialist firm ESR assisted police at both addresses. Jessica was last seen in a red Holden Rodeo ute in Renwick. The ute was found three days later at the Lake Chalice car park in the Mount Richmond Forest Park, but police bosses think it was left there deliberately to hinder the investigation. Detective Senior Sergeant Sloan says inquiries are ongoing. 
Uh, next, we go to stuff.co.nz forward slash Marlborough Express. Now, I want to just give a bit of a warning. This article focuses on drug use and mental health issues, um, also issues about a uh, car accident. So, if any children are watching or this might trigger you in any way, please fast forward a bit and miss this bit. However, there will be information about how you can seek help if you need to at the end of the show and also in the description box below. For Jessica Boyce's friends, reminders of the girl they lost linger in the patchwork alterations she made to their clothes, the stray cat that still visits for biscuits, the feathers and dream catchers hanging in her bedroom. But the woman they knew was lost long before she became a missing person, believed to have been killed in March. Friends and family trawled forests, circulated missing posters and launched a website. But Boyce has never turned up and police launched a homicide investigation in October. In the two years before she disappeared, Boyce had stopped seeing her friends, started smoking methamphetamine and her happy, bubbly nature had been replaced with the effects of severe mental health issues. Uh, not a good combination, mental health issues and then adding that horrible shit mess on top of it. She was never the same after a crash in March 2017, which left her with a head injury, broken ribs, a fractured shoulder and a broken neck. Dylan Sutton, 24, died in that crash. The driver was Jessica's ex-boyfriend, Stuart Holden. He was found guilty of manslaughter at the High Court in Blenheim in May last year and was sentenced to five years and six months imprisonment. My opinion, just my opinion, I don't think that was long enough. Uh, Jessica gave evidence in the jury trial, breaking down as she described Holden's scary driving. And this is a picture of Dylan Sutton, the young 24-year-old killed in the crash in 2017. A life lost. The methamphetamine came from Stuart. We had two or three goes on the pipe each, Jessica said. I think he was getting a bit paranoid because we were talking amongst ourselves. The two women in the back seat were whispering about Holdem's driving and holding hands out of fear. As the four-wheel drive approached a bend north of the Wailea River Bridge on State Highway 6, it rolled down a bank into a vineyard, landing upside down. Boyce had leaned over her friend in the back seat to brace for impact, she told the court. And this is Steph Stratton, um, and her brother was one killed, and um, she's a friend of Jessica's. Ambulance staff described the crash site smelling like cannabis. Debris was strewn across the vineyard, a trail of car parks, clothing and fishing gear. Sutton's girlfriend called emergency services on her cell phone shortly before 11pm. The helicopter couldn't get to us because it was raining and it was too windy. The police and ambulance came. It was raining quite heavily by that stage, boys said. The ambulance and police took us to Wairau Hospital. I was there maybe like two weeks. I broke the top of my neck. They call it the hangman's break. Nina Hagen, a friend, said the creative, caring, bright spark she went to school with was different after that. Hagen said Jess blamed herself, and I think that made it even worse. If it was just the crash, that wouldn't have been that bad, but she blamed herself for the guy dying. She had that survivor's guilt. She goes on, uh, usually she's the one texting everyone to say, come around and have some drinks, and then all of a sudden, nothing. I'd text her after the crash to see how she was doing, but she didn't want anyone to come to the trial or talk about it. She didn't want to burden anyone with it. I've had uh, personal experience with head injuries, and I know they can change a person's personality absolutely completely to a person that you don't know. Um, it can also make them very naive and trusting, uh, a bit um, immature in a way, and they've got to learn a whole lot of things again.
it's um, these head injuries can be quite devastating. The original voice was a bit of a teenage rebel who was capable of getting good grades in school but did not turn up much. She would jump in the sea in the middle of winter and wander where no one else wandered. She fancied herself a matchmaker, always trying to set up single friends and always ensuring that everyone felt included in a group. Boyce wanted to be a counsellor for a while. She put everybody first. Steph Stratton said Jessica liked Harry Potter and Disney movies and named her dog Alice after Alice in Wonderland. And I'm guessing that this is a photo of Jess and Alice. Boyce dismissed mainstream fashion and came up with her own style. She didn't care what others thought. That was her inner child. She was just a free spirit, Stratton said. There were spontaneous camping trips. There was a river she thought was her secret river. She would find a little off-road path and then it would be her track. She found some amazing places. We did a lot of unprepared camping, but as long as you have music, that's the main thing. Jess would say, I don't care what you listen to, but I'll hold the auxiliary cord. When Holden came on the scene, um, the ex-boyfriend and the driver of the car, Boyce became distant and started smoking methamphetamine. I know for a fact she was ashamed of her drug use, Stratton said. If it was any of us going down the path that Jess was going down, she would have lost the plot at us and asked why we were destroying our lives. The trauma of the crash, followed by her recovery in hospital and then the court process, only increased Boyce's drug use, her friends said. Um, and this is the guy that was driving, sentenced to five years and six months for that young man's death. Stratton said there was a bit of a blame game after the crash and Jessica copped it. People said things to her, but what they got from Jess was utter remorse. They needed someone to scream at and Jess was there. Um, so it sounds like she had a lot going on. He was never sorry, so Jess had to be. Someone had to be sorry, and that's just who she was. In the months before Boyce's disappeared, she twice visited the mental health service at Wairau Hospital in Blenheim. But she was not considered high risk, despite having symptoms of depression, anxiety, and memory problems, as she was not actively trying to hurt herself. I think that's absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. So if... The only time they're saying you'd get help is if you hurt yourself and then you get help. That's absolutely tragic. When someone is actively trying to help themselves and they want help and then they get turned away, I just don't understand. Her mother, Kay Johnston, previously said that Jessica was in a bad mental state. Their doctor arranged an urgent meeting with specialist mental health services but at the end of the day, they gave her a couple of tablets and sent her home, her mum said. Jessica moved back in with her mum, but often disappeared from the house. She had a second mental health assessment on February 21. She was referred on to drug and alcohol treatment, but missed her follow-up appointment on March 6. She knew she needed help, and she wanted help. She even told them that, her mum said in April. A couple of weeks after that, she went missing. She was gone, just like that. I feel if they, meaning mental health staff, had listened to me and the doctor, she would be in Nelson right now getting the care she needs. Of course, voice was last seen on March 19. Three days later, on March 22nd, Johnston, whose red dude was missing, called the Marlborough Mental Health Service to see if voice would be given treatment if she was found to have taken the truck. The Mental Health Services General Manager previously declined to comment citing privacy but acknowledged Boyce's family was distressed. How nice of her to acknowledge that they were distressed. How the hell did that help them? Johnston reported the ute stolen, hoping if Jessica was found in the ute, she would be given help. When search and rescue teams gave up the search, the family took over. 
Six Blenheim detectives and a detective sergeant had been sifting through more than 120 tip-offs to eliminate false leads before searching six Marlborough properties, seizing items of interest for forensic analysis. Investigations team leader Detective Senior Sergeant Sloan believes Boyce's disappearance was the work of her acquaintances. Police knew of her involvement in Blenheim's pervasive and growing meth scene and their inquiries were focused on that community, Sloan said. Police were waiting on the results of forensic analysis but weren't rushing to make an arrest. He said it's going to be a long, drawn-out investigation but the police will keep working on it. We won't be closing this investigation until it's resolved. Frontline police Police did not see much methamphetamine use firsthand in Blenheim's nightlife or when visiting house parties, but they definitely seen the aftermath. The effects on behaviour, the extreme behaviour displayed by users, and the crimes committed to support their habits, burglaries and stealing from their own families and that sort of thing. Nina Hagen, a friend of Jess's again, said meth was not socially acceptable in Blenheim and Jessica knew it. She said, I think most people would say with partying that there's a line and you've crossed it. I know people who would do ecstasy and LSD who still wouldn't do meth. She crossed over that line and she was ashamed of it. She says there is limited help for meth addicts in Blenheim. Nowhere, there's nowhere in Blenheim for someone to walk in off the street and say, I need help. If I go home, I'm going to keep smoking meth. Steph Stratton says, you walk into the hospital and they call the police. It's really sad that there's um, no help. And these people up in Blenheim, they feel like there's no help and nowhere to go. That's really sad. Um, I am slowly losing my voice. I've done a lot of filming and talking, so just bear with me. She said, it's just sad to think that Jessica probably continued to fall down this terrible hole and she felt like there was no way back up. And yet, Troy McGregor, a friend of hers, said they had not given up hope their friend would walk through the door one day. He said, we know it's unlikely, but you can never say never. Boyce's uncle Brent Boyce said on behalf of the wider family this Christmas would be difficult, their first without her. He thanked the police for their diligent investigation and their efforts to bring the family closure, as well as the unwavering support from the community. He goes on to say, Jess, you were the best we could ask for. We will cherish our moments forever. We can't see things ever being the same without your radiant, bubbly spirit. Never have we dealt with anything more difficult than facing or having to face each day without you being there in our lives. We've never met anyone like you, and we thank God we had a chance to know you as our gorgeous girl. It would be a blessing for us all if we could get you home. Um, that makes me quite emotional. Uh, as I said, uh, if this story triggers anything for you, there is a whole bunch of numbers here that you can ring to get help. I'm going to put all these in the description box below. And also, I'm going to have them at the end of the episode. On October 22, 2019, the police uh, released an update. Police are now treating the disappearance of 27-year-old Jessica Boyce as a homicide. Uh, we know about the car. Police now believe the vehicle, which has been seized for forensic examination, was deliberately left in the car park in an effort to, to mislead the investigation. As a result of their inquiries, investigators have identified a number of other locations of interest in Marlborough. Additional resources from the Tasman and Canterbury Police Districts have been deployed to Marlborough to assist with the investigation, which remains a priority for police. Police are committed to supporting Jessica's family throughout this investigation, and we extend our sincere condolences to them following this serious development. And um, we do too. Again, information down there where you can uh, uh, ring or get hold of police. I'll have that in the description box below or at the end of the show. 
and then on the 19th of March uh, 2020, so just a couple of months ago, the police released another statement and I'm at scoop.co.nz. This Thursday 19th March 2020 will mark one year since the disappearance of Marlborough woman Jessica Boyce. An intensive search was undertaken but sadly Jessica was not located and in October 2019 police announced we were treating her disappearance as a homicide. Six detectives are working on Operation Largo, the investigation into Jessica's disappearance. Our officers have established that a significant amount of misinformation has been received by police in what appears to be a deliberate attempt to impede and frustrate the investigation into Jessica's disappearance. What a bunch of... Mm, I'm not going to say... This includes the placement of Jessica's Red Holden Rodeo Ute in the Lake Chalice car park, which we believe was put there to mislead the investigation team. Police are also aware that several persons of interest have left the Marlborough area over the past year, possibly in the mistaken belief that this will help them avoid police attention. And uh, New Zealand's a small, small country, so it doesn't matter where you go. And... With the power of social media, media and Kiwis, I know Kiwis want things to be found out and they want to share things and they want to help victims and help victims' family. So move away. It's not going to make any difference. Police said, despite these obstacles, the investigation team is steadily working through and following up on all information received. We remain absolutely focused on resolving this case and providing answers for Jessica's family and loved ones. We are continuing to make progress and on the 9th of March 2020, Marlborough Police seized a black Mazda utility vehicle, which we believe is connected to Jessica's disappearance. The vehicle is currently undergoing a forensic examination. Now, with the COVID-19 lockdown that we've been going through, I don't know whether the ESR scientists and forensic examiners um, were considered an essential service. So I don't know whether they continued to do their work through the lockdown or whether they had to stop. I know that uh, forensics can take quite a while to come back. And if they shut down over the lockdown, then obviously... They've lost all that time to work on it. But here's hoping, uh, as I'm filming this on the 15th of May, that now we're in level two, they've all gone back to work and we'll work on all this forensic um, stuff and uh, find out some information. Obviously, information about where you can submit, I will have that down below and at the end of the show. From the nzherald.co.nz on the 17th of March 2020, Jessica Boyce's family make heartfelt plea to her killer. The family of murder victim Jessica Boyce have made an emotional plea to her killer to end their torment. As the first anniversary of the day she disappeared approaches, Jessica's cousin Aaron has a message for her killer. Hand yourself in and he is begging for the murderer to reveal where Jessica's body can be found so she can finally be laid to rest. In an open message to the killer, Aaron says he still hopes that Jessica's killer will do the right thing. He says, you have had a year to do the right thing. I still, perhaps naively, hold on to hope that your conscience will get the better of you, that any good values your family may have instilled in you when you were young will win out. You'll make an attempt at redemption and you'll either hand yourself, up, yourself in or at least find a way to communicate to us where we can find and retrieve Jess, he says. Jessica's disappearance became a homicide investigation in October. Posting on the Find Jess website last week, Aaron says the killer must be struggling with what they have done. Now, I don't think the website is active anymore. I had a look. But um, the Help Jess Facebook page is still active. I 
went on there last night and asked to join and someone accepted it so I will have information about that in the description box below and also at the end of the episode and you might want to join and help them out in January this year uh, they held a vigil for missing Marlborough woman Jessica Boyce and this is from stuff.co.nz the 28th birthday of missing Marlborough woman Jessica Boyce, who police suspect is a homicide victim, has been marked with a vigil in Blenheim. A group of 15 people gathered in central Blenheim at Seymour Square to mark Boyce's birthday on Sunday. Her cousin Aaron said the event was subtle and non-official, because that's how Jess would have wanted it. He said we sat around and we shared some memories, we collectively sang happy birthday for her, and then we had a moment of silence for her after the clock tower went off at 7pm. We told people there's no need to turn up with candles and bunches of flowers. We wanted to share some jokes and turn up as we were, as Jess would have liked it. Um, you can see in there, I think she has a lot of photos with pets. And this is just a gorgeous photo of her, <laughs> that wee kitten. A further 50 people watched the vigil via live stream on Facebook from places such as Auckland, Wellington and Dunedin and that's awesome. Her cousin from Dunedin, Aaron, stepped back from the search last June after the toll it took on his life. He said he had been putting off returning to Blenheim because of the memories he had in the town with his missing cousin. I've got so many memories of being with Jess in this town that every park, every street, it's like seeing ghosts of Jess, he said. It became obvious to the family a lot sooner than it was officially announced that she had been killed. I've known for a good while that Jess was never coming back. And that's Aaron on the left there. He said while it was painful, he said Boyce's birthday was a realisation that he had to come back to town and front up to the truth. With her birthday coming up, I knew that I couldn't miss that. I couldn't be, not be here with family and friends. And, you, you know, this just goes to show what happens to the family when someone is missing or is hurt, murdered or whatever. It's not just the, you know, the mum and the dad and the siblings. It's the wider family and the wider friends. It actually affects a lot of people. Um... And that's really sad. I know this guy did so much searching. He held down the website for a while. He did the Facebook page for a while. And it all got a bit too much for him. And I actually think he probably suffers from a bit of PTSD after all this. And I imagine he's still um, suffering from this. So that's why I really want to help. And that's why I do these videos for the families and the victims, but for those families that need help, I reckon we can help them. I really do. So just before we go over the um, last details here, thank you very much for putting up with me, and I apologise again for the quality of the video and the audio, but I have to work with what I've got. I do hope one day I can get some better equipment. So let's just go over uh, the main points. Jessica was last seen on March 19th, driving her mother's red Holden ute. Two hikers found the vehicle abandoned near Lake Chalice in Mount Richmond, Forest Park, 90 minutes west of Blenheim on March the 22nd. And you can see my computer's doing the funky chicken. Why not? Police are treating the 27-year-old's disappearance as a homicide on 9 of March 2020, Marlborough Police seized a black Mazda utility vehicle, which we believe they said is connected to Jessica's disappearance. In November 2019, a Warwick Street property in Mayfield was searched with several items of interest seized by police. Another property was searched in Henderson Street, Riversdale, where samples of forensic value were seized. Occupants of both properties have been spoken to by police, but no arrests made. The family of missing woman Jessica Boyce want people to share her photo on social media to help shame her killer into coming forward. Her cousin Aaron urged people to share the photo in the hope it would 
prick someone's conscience. And of course, that's exactly what we're going to do. He said, hopefully seeing Jess everywhere might break the conscience of whoever is involved and propel them to come forward. And he is begging for the murderer to reveal where Jessica's body can be found so she can finally be laid to rest. In an open message to the killer, Aaron says he still hopes that Jessica's killer will do the right thing. So if you have information about Jessica's disappearance and possible homicide, uh, no matter how insignificant or significant you think it might be, please contact Marlborough Police on 03578 uh, Information can also be provided anonymously via Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. Or you can go online uh, to crimestoppers-nz.org and that can be anonymously as well. And you can just open your Google and type in Crime Stoppers and it will come up. Again, if this episode brung up any issues for you, these are the numbers that you can call for help. And I am going to put some of them in the description box below and on the website. So thank you very much. I know this has been a long one. It's been a long one for me, uh, but I appreciate you being here and I appreciate the work you're going to do and sharing. And um, let's find out what happened to this young lady. See you later next time.